you want to work with us, let's see. Fingers crossed. Yay, that's what I want to see. Lovely. Hey, uh, so I'm Ben Weatherall. I work at a company called Voxon Photonics. Uh, we're located down at uh, Tonsley Innovation Precinct. Uh, we've been, I don't actually know quite how long we've been around. I've only been with the company for about three months now. Uh, unfortunately, the one of our, our CEO was off exploring the world and doing amazing things. Uh, so I was asked to come in and talk to you all about our Unity integration. So. Um, before I show you that slide. Uh, so we've got a low level SDK at the moment available for our uh, volumetric display, but it's uh, low level and that's like literally just draw calls. So if you want to, and like a uh, very simple uh, direct call. So we obviously want to produce content as quickly as possible and a established game engine such as Unity made the most sense. So that's what I was brought in to do. I just uh, I'm writing the bridging software between the SDK and Unity and I'll be talking to you today about the uh, process, how it works and um, some of the trials etc that we go through. But uh, I'll start off with a little video on what is the Voxy Box or the VX1. If it works. I <laughs> uh, don't think I'm getting audio. Oh, there we are. Never mind. All good. Um, uh, next slide, please. There we are. So, um, that was a quick demonstration of the VX1. Um, I've got a obviously a live unit here. I'll show it off afterwards. Just the people on the live stream thought that it'd be nice to be actually able to see it in action. Um, so yes, uh, as I said before, I'm Ben Weatherall. I'm the software systems integration developer. Um, or basically the guy who gets Unity working and answers questions on Slack. Uh, so the Voxon uh, VX1 is the uh, world's most advanced display, uh, volumetric display. Uh, it uses a process of... Um, basically it um, draws hundreds of uh, layers and does it so frequently as to trick the eye into seeing fully volumetric displays. Uh, the resolution, for anyone interested in the technical specs, is as it says there, 1000 by 1000 by 200 voxels, um, which don't obviously translate into the real world of pixel because how do you measure that? Uh, but the physical display is 18 centimetres by 18 centimetres by 8, so you can just do a bit of quick math to work out how many millimetres each uh, voxel will be. Um, obviously that resolution will change slightly when we're in colour mode, because colour mode requires, much like an old CRT monitor, red, green, blue to be um, drawn very close together so that the colours actually merge together in your brain and thus you get a uh, different colour voxel. So, uh, under, uh, so that's kind of how it works. It uh, just draws hundreds of layers up and down, creates a 3D image that you can actually see and uh, that has depth on it. Working with uh, Unity though is a bit much uh, because Unity doesn't in is not intended to work in a three-dimensional space. Uh, obviously, you get all the mesh data, etc. is available three-dimensionals, but the graphics pipeline is transform your vertex data, 
um, do some more transformations internally, and then rasterize, i.e. flatten it all out into a single thing, and then do all your processing. So that's where you get your shadows, because you can do that all at the, um, at, uh, with shaders after, you flatten it all out, because you can work out the math of bouncing, etc. Uh, with a volumetric display, you don't know where your user is, so all that math goes straight out the window. Uh, you don't, you can't flatten it out and say, okay, well, we had uh, 200 million points of data, now it's down to only, what is it, 1024 by two, uh, 768, or whichever resolution you're working at. So we actually have to keep all our um, graph uh, data the entire way through. So what we've done is we had to, to stop having to do double drawing because it's actually only a very small computer in there. We've turned off the graphics pipeline. We've, uh, and with doing that, all our cameras broke. So uh, Unity doesn't cameras turn off as soon as you're in batch mode. So you can't use that for capturing uh, data. Uh, animations automatically turn themselves off, makes sense. Uh, and input's disabled, so if you play around with your controller and your games and uh, batch mode, that's also turned off. So, we've had to write a whole heap of C++, uh, C Sharp scripts, which I was in C++, but... Um, and... So yeah, we're, we've written a heap of C++, uh, C Sharp scripts, which actually draw out the mesh data, uh, which isn't something Unity normally want you working with either. Uh, we've had to turn on read write for all the textures because that's also normally optimized out for going straight into a games engine, uh, like or to go straight into your graphics card. Uh, so we've then taken all that data, perform uh, the standard vertex transforms using compute shaders instead of your normal graphics shaders. Can compute shaders actually work in batch mode? So um, if you ever need to do like number crunching in Unity, you can do. Just write up a compute shader and that will work instead and it can work in batch mode so you don't even have to have a graphics interface for it. Um, we then actually pipe that data straight into the VX1. Uh, well, to the VX1's SDK. The use of the... Um, uh, we do all this via a uh, proprietary DLL that's pub, uh, like we make available. We also provide the header file, so you can actually interact with it um, if you want to write low-level stuff yourself. But Unity then starts rearing some of its odd um, bugs that I don't think many people, or bugs or features that most people don't ever get to see, uh, such as, did you know if you load a um, non-managed uh, DLL into Unity, it grabs hold of it and will not let it go unless you close Unity completely. So uh, if you ever work with your own DLLs, just something to remember. Um, <laughs> you can't hot swap them once Unity's running. You actually have to close Unity down, replace it, start Unity again, and then it'll start working. But if anyone knows a way around that, please tell me. I would love to know, but everyone online agrees that just doesn't happen. Um, and yeah, so the cameras aren't there, so we have to work out what is and isn't to be drawn. And to do that, we actually just have to use colliders. Uh, I have a little box set up, slap a box collider on everything. Um, often make them obviously uh, non-physical colliders, just they're there to be detected. And use that if they pass into the section, we slap a uh, drawable unit on it and that's what gets drawn. If they leave, we give it a little uh, kill countdown timer to remove it because obviously a lot of players love to go just out and then back in and I don't really want to see us hitching every time they go out because at least the, the system as it is doesn't map or create a dictionary of meshes or textures uh, which is a fun uh, problem to have to think about like uh, remembering okay I've process this mesh, I'll keep it in the background for the next time one of these units is loaded. So at the moment we don't, but we do realise it needs to be done to improve resolution. So as I mentioned, uh, traditional shaders don't work, so that's a new interesting field of math I get to work on at one stage, or if anyone wants to put their hand up, happily um, talk to people, because <laughs> lighting when you have no point to know where the other person, is, uh, where the viewer is, and um, having to update mesh color in real time via other meshes, it's very, very annoying. <laughs> so um, I'll let you know what we've currently got. Uh, we've currently got a DLL uh, labeled as 0.2.2, .2, which works with Unity's 2017.3. Uh, 2018 broke 
a lot of stuff. Um, some on purpose, some not on purpose. Uh, you, if anyone uses to, uh, set pixel 32 as a function in Unity, it's currently broken for ARGB 32 textures. They only just discovered that the other day. I was going through, oh, all my textures are white. Oh, it's broken and they are aware of it. Hopefully it'll be fixed soon. Uh, we've got support for static meshes and animated meshes. So uh, anything that's animated, we can actually update the meshes in real time. Uh, color and uh, color, obviously vertices and static texture support. We've got 2D particles working now, which is great. Uh, not rotation for the particles, but uh, in simple mode, we can support up to half a million uh, particles within the display at a resolution, uh, at a frame rate over about 17 frames per second, uh, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but the, with how the device works, that's pretty much the optimal frame rate for us. Uh, audio just worked out of the box for us, thankfully. We use the SDK's uh, support for both keyboard and Xbox controllers since uh, the X Xbox uh, controller support is DirectX and uh, works below Unity. It doesn't even notice it, so that's good. Uh, keyboard's still a little bit fa uh, flaky because we use Microsoft key codes, which um, if you've never had to deal with them, they have a set of numbers for half your keyboard and then use a hidden E uh, OE value to give you the other half. Problem is our system doesn't currently support the other OE. So um, left control works and that also counts as right control. <laughs> uh, and yeah, um, we've currently got Leap Motion, RealSense camera and 3D connection mouse support. Uh, if you've not seen a 3D connection mouse, it's one of these guys. It's a six degree of movement mouse which actually goes forward, backwards, left, right, up, down and tilts in all <coughs> three axes. So working in a three-dimensional environment such as this, incredibly good uh, little bit of uh, kit. And so, as I mentioned, away from Unity, we have a low-level SDK. Uh, I don't know how many people, well, there's a few people here young enough to remember Duke 3D, the original. Um, so our chief computer scientist is Ken Silverman, the person who invented the build engine which powered Duke 3D. Uh, he's written all of our SDK, and it's really low level, very performant. Like I mentioned, um, you can, we can get some incredible numbers pumping through, and really the Unity side of things is the least uh, like the least performant so far. We're continuing to work on it, but it's um, we're very much aware that the Unity support we're creating is to allow people to create content quickly without having to build their own uh, full graphics engine, full physics engine. Unity comes with everything like that built in, so we're taking advantage of what's already there. But if you actually feel the desire to build something straight for this and you've got the time and energy to build your own engine, you'll make something far, far faster that will be uh, work great on the machine. All the SDK stuff's in C++, so if that's a language you're comfortable with, that's how you get working. Um, so, we're currently working on version 0 0.3, uh, finally get that 2018 support rolled out. We've got a number of, um, where the next version's aiming to do a shared de uh, DLL system whereby you can actually kind of give Unity a fake DLL to hold on to and then have it call to another DLL on its own so you can still do your loading and unloading. And uh, improving our editor stability. Uh, once you spit out of, uh, build something from Unity, it works great in Unity previewing, turning things on and off all the time. Uh, since we're calling to a physical device, doesn't work so great. Um, next, we're gonna be rolling out to Unreal Engine 4 because we wanna try and tackle on both sides of the gaming divide, as it were. And we have a Slack community where uh, we are on quite often. I'm generally answering questions late into the night or first thing in the morning. So if you've got questions at 5.30 in the morning, I'll be the one on answering for you. Sorry about that. <laughs> You'll get question, uh, answers you don't really want. And yeah, and basically we're really open to anyone who wants to work with us on the equipment. Uh, there are the web details for what we do. And um, yeah, uh, you, please feel free to contact me. I'm really happy to answer any questions anyone has. Uh, if anyone's looking to do placements, etc., I'll put you in contact with the guy internally who handles all that. And yeah, um, thank you very much for your time.
Uh, if you've got any questions, please let me know.